So now I would like to welcome our uh, topper who had got second rank, Jatin. So I would just, he, we would like to have a small interaction. So he was our GA student. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, I've got uh, All India rank two this time in the civil service exam. Uh, this was my second attempt at the civil service exam. And I have my education in economics. Uh, I also had my option as economics. So if anybody has any questions related to the exam or if any other questions, uh, you can ask. First of all, congratulations, sir. Ma'am, I had a doubt related history itself. I had a doubt. If you have anyways, congratulations, sir. Yeah. Thank you. If you need to talk to Jatin, I think you can raise your hand. Vishesh? Yeah, Vishesh? Uh, congratulations, sir. Thank uh, you. Yes, sir. I am very happy to talk to you, sir. I wanted to know that uh, while reading the newspaper, we come across many articles which have a strong criticism uh, regarding the government policies. So should we read that also? Should we consider that also as a part of our pre preparation or uh, we should not criticize government policies in general? Uh, so see, you all are aspiring to be government officers and you will be part of the system. Uh, so uh, definitely read the articles, go through them, what they're trying to say. And uh, always when you are trying to criticize something, always have some sort of solution to it. You needn't always uh, give answers that are exactly pro-government and never uh, are opposing any policies or having some sort of criticism because obviously there'll be drawbacks and flaws in uh, whatever every government is trying to do. Nobody can be perfect. And that's all that the government is also willing to accept criticism. But you have to be constructive in your criticism. It shouldn't be like you are, you are criticizing for the sake of criticizing. So definitely you can read those articles, see if you have, if they have some good points and you can uh, note them down or uh, however you'd like to uh, keep a record of them. And uh, you can definitely use them in your answers, but try and have a balanced approach in your answers. You, you shouldn't be too critical and it shouldn't appear that you are just supporting the government in everything. So they expect a, a proper analysis from you of the situation of the question. Sir, one more, one more thing, sir, I want to ask. Sir, regarding the current affairs part, uh, was the focus enough for you? Uh, or, or did you make uh, separate notes from the newspapers also? No, I didn't make notes from the newspaper because it becomes very difficult every day to make notes. Yes. Definitely read the newspaper. Reading the magazine alone is not enough. Read the newspaper every day. But you can rely on magazines for uh, revision. And if there is something you feel that is very important, can be highly relevant, you can make short notes out of that, but don't make it uh, a habit key. I have to make notes. Don't push yourself. Key, I have to make notes every day. Whatever you feel is important, definitely note it down. But the magazine was sufficient for me and I think it will work out for you as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. No Ajini. Good afternoon, sir. Congratulations. Good afternoon. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask you the role of PIB, PRS websites and RSTV in current affairs. Like they are often recommended. So, is right. are they really important? Uh, they they are important, but personally, I never used to refer to them a lot. Initially, you will be uh, you will come across many sources that you can read this, you can read that. But at the end of the day, newspaper covers the PIB is basically a government outlet, whatever the government uh, press releases are put out, those are appear on PIB. So whatever the government is doing important laws, important policies, and these are uh, almost always covered in newspapers also. So a lot of the time it's repetition. You can go through some PIB articles. So generally uh, you can look at these websites when you're looking at specific stuff. So, so you're looking at some, say, for example, food processing something you are preparing for uh, in, for the syllabus food processing there's a term in the syllabus and then you search something something food processing then it'll be better to look at something like pib but don't try and read pib every day because it becomes a lot it'll become very difficult to manage so i would recommend sticking to the newspaper and magazines okay sir. thank you sir you're welcome priyadarshini uh, hello sir congratulations hello thank you uh, so I have two questions. Uh, first question is uh, what was different between the first and the second attempt? And mm -hmm. my second question is what was uh, your approach towards current affairs in general on a daily basis, on a monthly basis? Uh, so what was different first attempt? I couldn't clear my prelims exam. Uh, I've been saying this a lot. First attempt, I attempted too few questions. I attempted only 70 questions. 
no matter how hard you try you will always make some of the other mistakes you can't be 100% accurate even if you feel that mm-hmm. so uh, that the negative marking and attempting uh, less questions that drives down your score so that is what happened with me in the first attempt second attempt uh, i attempted a lot more questions i attempted around eight, uh, 85 to 90 questions and i think that helped a lot Uh, so uh, you can try you can uh, take different approaches mock tests you can uh, uh, attempt mock tests and that will help you experiment you can try what ranges you are comfortable in what range you get a good score and uh, basically that will help you a lot uh, your second question was uh, current affairs right so current affairs initially it seems very daunting ye bhi padhna hai you have to read a lot this that everything but over time you will realize newspaper a lot of the things are irrelevant only whatever is in the syllabus those things uh, need to be read and there's a lot of repetition a lot of things come every day that helps in a way because you you reading the same thing again and again it sort of gets settled in your mind uh, mm-hmm. so that helps but uh, you after some time you don't have to spend a lot of time on the newspaper so uh, i used to read the newspaper every day without fail and i would recommend all of you do that as well and monthly i wasn't very consistent in reading the newspaper uh, the magazine every month sort of it used to get piled up i'm sure it will happen to you too but try and do it <laughs> it's too much of a backlog i know it's very difficult it's very easy to say that after you've qualified but you will have a backlog and that's natural don't panic about that thank you akul akul sharma hello hello hi congratulations sir thank you i coincidentally i was just watching your video prior to this class Right. So, sir, my question was about relating to current affairs only. Sir, so what were what were your go-to notes just prior to prelims? So, did you made hand notes or did you just uh, revise all the magazines or what were your go-to notes just prior to the prelims? I didn't make a lot of notes. I mainly stuck to the magazines and try and revising that. And sometimes you get uh, those theme-wise compilations also before uh, prelims, so that mm-hmm. can also help uh, because sometimes uh, you. miss out on some of the monthly magazines so it becomes very difficult to go back the theme wise magazines helps in that so you can do that uh, if you are if you are comfortable making notes uh, there's nothing like that but i felt it took a lot of time and it wasn't very useful so i didn't go for that approach i stuck to magazines whatever is comfortable for you so just so uh, just prior to the present you uh, revise through the magazines yes that's what i used to do for current thank you sir thank you best of luck sir thank you Good afternoon, sir. Congratulations. This is Janvi. Hello. Hi. Uh, sir, I have a doubt that since you are a Rouse GS student, what extra references or books did you refer to other than the Blue Book? Ah, uh, so I would say you stick to one source, read that multiple times. The Blue Book also is a compilation from many sources, so I'm sure your teachers are recommending one textbook or one main okay. source, NCERT or. whatever else for other subjects so do that multiple times keep revising that and for subjects that have current aspects do that as well current affairs so keep limited sources don't don't go after too many sources that will not help in the long run so there is this other question that uh, what strategies did you use for note making of the main subjects also so uh, this is also something that i discussed uh, not i with the other batch Uh, so i never made notes in my life in college or in school so i was very bad at making notes and here also i thought ki uh, it will work out i used to underline stuff in textbooks and used to revise from that but uh, before means you have so much to revise so much to cover it becomes very difficult to revise the textbooks so i would recommend you make notes so what i did was uh, some of my batchmates uh, in my other service i'm currently working uh, elsewhere so they had made notes they had cl- uh, qualified last year so i uh, took a little help from them and i used to read them multiple times and they sort of became like my notes of course uh, whatever you've written to you, uh, by your own hand uh, nothing can compare to that so i would recommend you make notes this is something that i realized after giving the means uh, so definitely i would recommend make notes because it becomes very you need something very crisp on every topic in the syllabus you need like a uh, one one page or two page or 200 words you, you need to have something like that just before na- mains for revision so do make notes okay thank you sir you welcome moksha sharma hi sir hello congratulations again thank you uh, 
Uh, sir, I wanted to ask, when exactly did you start preparing, preparing for your optional subject? Uh, so given uh, how detailed it is, it must uh, take a lot of time. So uh, my optional subject was economics. So I've done both bachelor's and master's in economics. So I already had a very solid uh, background in economics. So I did not have to devote, devote a lot of time in learning the basics. But if you have something that is not your graduation something a uh, subject or you are doing something from scratch, uh, I wouldn't be the best person to recommend that. I spent, uh, started optional very late because I knew I was comfortable in that. Uh, the basic concept, especially for something like paper one, uh, I already had a good grasp of. Paper two is a little more Indian economy based. It is also something which is covered in our courses, but you need to put a little more effort. So I started my optional pretty late, but if you, if you are doing a subject, which is not your graduation or you haven't done it before, I would recommend you start it early, maybe say uh, three, four months into your preparation. Yes, thank you. Kalika? Kalika? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, can you please share your strategy for the preparation of this exam, like in general, every day? So every day, I didn't really have a timetable aspect to it because uh, I tried it, you know, try and make a timetable, stick to it, but it didn't really work out for me. So my day, there wasn't a typical day as such. So what I tried to do was I tried to cover a, a, a substantial portion of one subject together. I didn't try and do multiple subjects in one day because I felt that it didn't really work for me. So I would cover polity for like two, three weeks at a stretch. This is when I first started preparing for it and not talking about the uh, revision aspect of it. When I start, start first preparing for it, because everything's new, there's so much to learn. So I went subject by subject. Uh, sometime I'll spend on polity, sometime on history, then uh, geography, so on. But if you, uh, it, again, it depends on uh, what you are used to, what you are comfortable with. If you are able to manage doing two, three subjects, uh, spend two hours uh, to each subject, then you can do that. But I prefer doing subject by subject. So I didn't really have a typical day as such. Thank you, sir. Jay Chandra. Jay Chandra. Uh, am I audible? Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, you. Hello. Congratulations, sir. Happy to talk to you. Thank you. Sir, my question is regarding current affairs and uh, how much time of current affairs is like one and a half hour or one year before exam? Two years? How much, how long duration of current affairs? So you're saying how many, uh, how many years? How many years? Of... Yes. Okay. So uh, I would say one year is enough. You will always year. have questions from something happening before that in the question, uh, in the paper, prelims uh, mainly means of course also you can have questions but you don't really have specific questions in mains that you will need to have read a specific uh, years paper or years current affairs i would recommend stick to one year one year is more than enough because at the end of the day there's no limit to current affairs you can keep doing two three years but the return to that is very low so one year is enough uh, do one year current affairs thank you surangana Congratulations, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, I just wanted to ask that international, how to prepare international relations or Indian economy from the mains aspect, not from uh, the prelims as well, but how to write like a descriptive answer on that. So international relations is mostly uh, current affairs based. You you would like uh, you want to have some uh, brief background history of what our relations have been with other countries. So, for example, like Russia, what have been our historical relations uh, with the U.S., with other countries, with China. Uh, so, have a brief idea of that. And the, most of the questions are from current aspects. So, what is happening currently? And there are a lot of good editorials that come in the newspaper. You can make notes of that. You can uh, rely on magazines. Most uh, magazines have. Uh, specific sections on international relations where they cover uh, India, US, India, Russia, India, and lots of other bilateral relations, even multilateral relations. So that is the best way to prepare international relations. Uh, I wouldn't say you should read a book. There's no specific book for that. Uh, so stick to the current aspects. 
can you recommend one magazine or editorial where the international relations editorial the, in the newspaper itself okay editorial. and magazines any mag not any specific magazine whatever current affairs magazines you are using i i'm not talking about any specific international relations magazines okay stick to whatever current affairs magazine don't read too many magazines it doesn't help thank you so much Avishkar. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah. Congratulations, sir. Uh, really Thank happy to talk to you. Uh, sir, my question is, what was your uh, strategy for means with regards to answer writing, and how did you like manage within the specified word limit? Because uh, when we learn so much, we kind of face problems restricting ourselves to writing answers. Hmm. So writing answers is definitely a big part of this exam. In fact, the most important part of the exam. I had not done a lot of answer writing practice, especially in my second attempt, uh, I, because I was uh, undergoing training as well uh, while I was preparing. So I didn't get a lot of time to prepare for that. But I would recommend you do a lot of answer writing as much as you can. But uh, uh, initially, I would recommend you try and build up some content base. because doing right answer writing without having any content in mind is not going to be very helpful so have a basic understanding of your static subjects or if your uh, dynamic aspects and then you can uh, start doing answer writing uh, yes sir congratulations sir thank you uh, so my question is so what was your approach specifically towards the essay and ethics paper uh, so uh, so these are two papers where uh, you, you don't really have to go by books books are not going to be very helpful ethics uh, specifically what i would recommend ethics seems very complicated at first there's a lot of new terms but remember you don't have to go into the jargon uh, jargon will not help every topic so there's a, st- a specific uh, syllabus given for ethics each term that is there in the syllabus try and have something like uh, a small definition of each term and then one or two examples how you can relate to it or some examples from uh, famous personalities uh, simple simple things like mahatma gandhi's lives uh, you can learn a lot of lessons from that simple example like you can give your personal examples what you did in your own life so have something like that and the question sort of revolve around these terms only and you can try and mold your answer uh, to fit the demand of the question don't go into too complex uh, aspects of it essay paper is uh, something which is very intimidating initially for me also it was very intimidating because uh, it's very uh, daunting how will you write 1000 words or 1200 words but i think the gs preparation helps a lot so essay is like a combination of all th- all uh, three in fact all four papers all four G- uh, gs papers so essay you will have a topic and you will have to cover all aspects of the uh, thing so think of it as like uh, writing 10 mini answers so uh, you there are lots of approaches uh, that people have suggested you can go the for the different dimensional aspect political economic social uh, technical or you can go through a chronological uh, pattern so it depends on the essay and depends what you're comfortable with but think of it you should have like uh, so the essay is 1000 to 1200 words so have around 10 to 12 main theme themes or main idea that you'd like to uh, present in your essay paper and just write 100 100 words on that of course you need to have a proper flow and the essay should make sense so it's important to plan your essay essay paper is in fact the uh, least lengthiest paper you have a uh, the number of words that you have to write in 3 hours that's the least in the essay paper so you can spend some time plan your essay for 10 15 20 minutes even uh, you have a proper structure for the essay before you uh, start writing the essay so that will help and you can uh, this will help uh, practice will help you can try and uh, practice writing essays this will help over time you will be able to manage thank you so much sir you're welcome so uh, yesterday upsc has announced the final results and uh, i am sure all of you already know that you are quite uh, active in that aspect so i have with us uh, the all india rank 2 of this year mr uh, jatin kishore with us and he has been our student of uh, gs classroom program so i would like to introduce you uh, uh, to all of you mr jatin please come yeah Uh, hello everyone uh, so i'm jatin kishore i've secured rank 2 uh, the yesterday the results were out uh, so how's how's everything going how's the preparation going i think they can't speak no? that's okay yeah yeah that's fine 
so so i will just give a brief introduction so i have my background in economics and i've done my masters and bachelors in economics my optional subject in upsc was also economics uh, so <laughs> everything is economics about me i was also working in the indian i am currently working in the indian economic service uh, this was my second attempt at upsc and thankfully i've got a good a good rank Uh, and i'll be able to join the indian administrative service so i just like to wish you all the best i know this is a difficult time for all of us with covid happening and studies have been disrupted for everyone uh, but i think this is a very nice initiative by raus that you can at least uh, all right thanks everyone thank you uh, but it, this is a very good initiative that uh, raus has started that you can at least continue your studies and there's not much of a di uh, disruption and i think that's very important prelims coming up uh, so all the best all the best to all of you and yeah if anybody has any questions uh, yes i took economics as optional and if any anybody has any other questions yes ajay asked him a question nandini uh journey how is the journey <laughs> it's difficult i won't lie that it's very easy it's a hectic period the exam is pretty long and grueling and i wouldn't say that i was really excited if i hadn't cleared it because i was already working so i'm not sure if i would have gone through another experience of it but at the end of the day it's a very satisfying journey that you feel that you've actually learned a lot because uh, even in college uh, i don't think you learn a lot of aspect especially about your country and looking at it from a very diverse point of view covering lots of different areas so it's definitely a very good experience uh, and it's good that you've chosen to be a part of that experience and again i'll wish you all of the best and hope all of you are successful a uh, timetable i didn't use a timetable uh, because i felt it never really worked for me i tried making timetables and uh, i was ne never able to stick to it but if that works to, uh, works for you you can uh, do that it uh, depends how you've been studying all along just try to do it uh, yourself uh, don't try and copy anybody's way w what worked for me might not work for you uh, so again depending on how you've been doing uh, please continue that and try and experiment a little maybe it will work for you but don't try and force yourself too much to go by a timetable uh, revision of blue book ncert revision is most important i'd say uh, do one source and do it three four times don't do three things uh, only once that won't help you at all keep revising whatever you're reading how to improve to answer for means this is basically practice you'll have to keep writing again and again 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 because this was the second time i was already working uh, i was undergoing training so i didn't get a lot of time for answer writing practice but try and improve and plus uh, don't what i feel personally is don't uh, start writing answers from uh, day one itself try and build up a content base because Uh, don't just try and write answer for, for the sake of writing answers try and build up your content base just basic static subjects polity history geography do a little bit of that and then you can try start writing answers don't start uh, start writing from day one but uh, after a little while do uh, start attempting and practicing that will help a lot current affairs of past how many years i think one year is enough because i mean there's always cases i remember when my first prelims were uh, 2017 they had a question from 2004 uh, some report in 2014 so some questions will always be there but you can't keep on reading current affairs uh, so one year is more than enough newspaper reading uh, initially it's tough it will be tough for everyone it was tough for me as well uh, but i had been reading newspapers uh, from uh, college days as well uh, but uh, you can start uh, slowly slowly it will become easier initially it will take a long a while might even take you one one and a half hours but over time try and reduce it to uh, around 145 minutes to one hour don't need to read everything i'm sure they've already told you a lot about it they have those uh, daily headlines that helps how to approach prelim that's it okay all right all right all right so sure, uh, all right uh, a very nice meeting all of you all the best all the best subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you do not miss any video lesson from browser